We'll get started here in a couple minutes. How many people in here are from, live in the Dallas area now? Okay, and how many people are out of Texas? All right. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Curtis Boyd is gonna be talking to us. He is the founder of the Transparency Company. And uh, let's all give him a big hand and welcome up, Curtis. Hello, hello. Thanks for the intro. Can you guys hear me? Checked. Yep, pretty good. Oh, that's a bad place. Bad place to stand. How about here? Oh, wow. Okay, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Getting a rise out of you guys. Thank you very much for choosing this room. I hope you guys get a lot of value out of today. I made this special for this event. This is, I've never presented this content. And so if I suck at it, I apologize in advance. I, I'm kidding. I, I, hope, I hope it's really valuable. Uh, yep, today's on the art of social proof. Before I go into like the juice and the meat of uh, today's presentation, I'm going to share a little bit about me, about my career, a little bit about myself. All right. Again, my name is Curtis Boyd. About uh, eight years ago, uh, before I became a software founder, I used to be a nurse in a hospital. Uh, I was in my fourth semester of nursing school in a BSN program. I think I have a photo of it. Ah, that's me right there. Uh, I was <laughs> I was floating down to the emergency room, emergency room when I met a, a cosmetic surgeon doing a, a consult on a facial reconstruction case, and uh, he was in a terrible mood. He was uh, complaining about a fake review that was hurting his private practice. And he put me into a terrible mood with his terrible mood. And I was like, well, I'm a student nurse. I'm in debt, 32 grand. So I guarantee your problems aren't as big as my student nurse problems. And he's like, Curtis, if you can figure out how to remove this fake review, I will pay off your student loans. And I'm like, doctor, that's, that's 32 grand. He's like, I've probably lost more than 100 grand just this week from this fake review. He's like, I've lost at least 12 consults. I charge anywhere from 10 to 15 grand per elective surgery or, you know, and uh, yeah, Curtis, I, I, if you can help me, I'm, I'd be glad to pay you. I've hired a reputation expert. I've hired lawyers. No one can see it. No one can help me. And my mom at the time worked at the hospital. She said he was a really stand up guy. And I was like, all right, mom, like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm a student nurse, though. Like, what do I do? He's like, oh, just be sure to call their office and let them know you're taking this very seriously. I'm like, okay, mom, sounds good. So I call the I call the <clears throat> receptionist. I, I I talk to them and I'm like, hey, this is Curtis, the student nurse. You you offered to pay off my student loans. Remember, can I can I really do this for you? And he said, absolutely. Could tell him I'm serious. I'm like, yeah, I could hear him in the background. He was very serious about it. So anyway, I had about 900 bucks in my bank account at the time. Bought a plane ticket to, to San Francisco the headquarters of where this review was. And I, <laughs> I approached people as they walked in and out of the building. Excuse me, do you work here? Do you know how to remove a fake review off your website? I have a doctor in Los Angeles. It's an emergency situation. They were like, are, are you crazy? Are you, are you homeless? Are you hungry? Do you need five bucks? I'm like, no, no, no. I, I'm a student nurse. I'm $32,000 in debt. And I, I need to figure out how to remove this review. I made 13, 14 bucks an hour at the time, and that would have made, made taken me a year and a half to save, at least. So I took it very seriously. Uh, anyway, I was 22 at the time, unmarried, having fun in San Francisco. I stayed the night. I stayed another, another day in a hostel. I met people who I could see in their eyes, they knew how to help me. Like, they would pause and they'd be like, oh, another one of you? Like, I'm like, please, like, help me here. On the third day, a young girl finally sat down and showed me how to uh, get rid of illegitimate online reviews on their site in a way that isn't really available online. It's a lot really difficult. They make you jump through a bunch of hoops. But 48 hours later, I had the review removed, a check for $32,000, and a new outlook on life on how I could help other people on this planet other than cleaning people up after they made messes. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, that doctor happened to be on the board of uh, directors for the entire, entire medical center. So by the time I graduated from nursing school, I had over 800 physician clients that I managed their online reputation for. Uh, 
I ended up going into uh, software to automate that process. I went back to school to figure out how to how to submit these queries automatically. Uh, working so long for so many different industries, branching out into home service, lawyers, uh, and what have you, I, I found out a little bit more about our marketplace, that most fake reviews weren't actually hurting business owners, that most fake reviews online today actually hurt consumers because they're positive. 90 plus percent of fake reviews online today are positive reviews geared to embellish products or services in a way that hurts the marketplace, it hurts consumers, and it hurts other businesses who are playing by the rules. Uh, it's very, very damaging. So I built a tool. I went back to school again for machine learning and, and data science and uh, built a product uh, that detected fake reviews. Uh, we launched it 13 months ago. Uh, we work for over six attorney general's offices, the Federal Trade Commission, and a few other people. So <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, so it's a pleasure to be here today and explain a little bit about how this all ties into to social proof. Um, we detect uh, fake reviews, but I don't want to get too much into my own stuff. I want to talk about the topic. I'm not here to sell you on my stuff. I'm here to tell you, just give, give some honest advice on what's happening today in the market. Social proof is being spoofed, right? You guys have seen it on tons of different websites. And like, as a marketer, you know how bad it is, but I'm going to go into specifics about what is being done and kind of what not to do and try to show you some great tips on some legitimate ways to do great social proof. Does that sound like an okay yeah. presentation? Yeah, all right, cool. Uh, all right, thank, thank you so much for taking photos. I really appreciate it. I don't have much content, so it's nice. Yeah, so have you guys ever been approached? How would you like to be on For ah! Forbes? Huh, or the ABC? Yeah, you, you guys have seen these offers? right so that you can put somewhere on your website this amazing social proof that you've gotten full features in all of these publications when the truth is is that they filled out a press release for you and it went to a pretty garbage place on their site that gets deleted every quarter right those press release pages don't stick but nevertheless you get to kind of make these bragging rights in my opinion these aren't it's not really very honest to say you've been featured in all these great places when really all you've done is submitted a press release. Um, these press release costs anywhere from $100 to $300 tops. And they might try and sell you on it like for $1,000, but how much value there is here. There are all no index links too. They're not default. Like there's not a lot of value in, in it, but sometimes you can pick up on some cool, uh, some cool outlets just, just out of luck, but that's it's very rare. But uh, yeah, these, these guys right here, you guys have probably seen it down the bottom row. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, sometimes it's really out of context too. It's like, why is a home service company seen in Forbes? Like, it's better to go local, right? It's better to be hyper-local, hyper-niched, like really within specifically what you do than to go for the big, the big guns or the big major pop, uh, publications. So when I see people doing things right, it's when they do things that are a lot more local and when, they, when they're on publications that are geared for the industries that they're in, that's so much more meaningful. It's also nice when you provide a link to it. I know it might hurt conversion because people are like, oh, I'm gonna click away, I'm gonna get out of your sales funnel, but it's nice that they get to see the, the you know, that you were actually featured there. All right, I'm just talk, talking about it a little bit, fake reviews, right? Anybody guess how much a fake review is today in today's market? Any guesses? Anybody? Ten bucks. That's a high, that even ten bucks is actually on the high side. Uh, the average fake review out there is about five dollars. Five bucks. So if you enter into the market for a few hundred dollars at face value, you can have the same reputation as someone who has been on the market for twenty years. And it's really hard to tell the difference. I mean, a lot of people could say they, oh, I, I can tell the difference. I can totally tell the difference. With the people who are actually pretty good at it, it's really hard to tell the difference. Um, but anyway, where does this fit in for social proof? Well, a lot of people use online testimonials on their websites throughout the customer journey, right? On the homepage. When, you when, you, when people host their own websites, when I think like, hey, I'm not like trying to oust Shopify here, but early on in Shopify's days, 
there weren't as many plugins as there are today to try and show legitimate reviews. You could publish your own reviews on your <laughs> inside on your site. And no one's going to verify them, right? It's the same thing on Google Maps today. A lot of people will post their own fake Google reviews and then publish those fake reviews on their on their homepage and say, "Look what's see being seen here on Google." Right? It's a big no-no. I know you guys know this, but statistics say that two and a half out of ten of you have bought fake reviews. And I don't judge. I don't judge, honestly. I've, I don't. I don't. Uh, uh, some people here also probably believe you know you should fake it until you make it. We disagree, but I don't. I don't like. I'm not like mad at you. I just disagree with you. That's all. Um, yeah. Anyway, fake group. Don't don't do fake reviews. Uh, oh my goodness. The, you, have you ever seen those those plugins at the bottom? Anna just bought the whole premium package seven minutes ago from Minnesota. I mean, these people literally publish websites where it's like you could use fake boosts. They even advertise you could use fake boosts. You know those little things in the corner. Someone just bought this. Someone bought the exact same product. People call it FOMO, you know, sales FOMO. You're gonna, they're gonna miss out if they don't buy it too. They're gonna be left out if they don't have this product. There's, there's a lot of, like I, I've seen legitimate sites use it in a, in a really nice way, but I also see a lot of this. I should, probably should have cropped that brand. I'm not trying to tattletale on anyone or say how to, how to run your business, but yeah, it's not, it's not a good thing. <clears throat> All right, I feel like I'm moving fast. I got to slow down. I only have like four more slides. <laughs> yeah, we're we're going to have a lot of questions. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, all right. Let's see here. Oh, it's the worst. Fake number of customers, right, for social proof. Oh, we've worked for 300,000 customers. You know what the worst part about this is? Is it sets the wrong expectations when you start working with someone. If you work with 300,000 customers, you've got a nice built machine that is handled. So, so onboarding process is perfect. Your fulfillment center is on point. When you say this and you onboard someone new and you've only got your first 50 clients, they're gonna know you don't have 300,000 clients. They're gonna be upset. And there's a lot of other things that go into this, but. But really, like, it sets the wrong expectations. Like, there are certain people who want to work with a company that only has 50 clients. They want a higher level of attention. They want to see what you got. They're, they're trying to work with smaller companies. That's, that's a good thing. So you should be honest. We have 50 customers. We're a startup. That's great. We have more than that. We're, we're really lucky. I think we're at, like, 700. And I'm proud of all 700 of them. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but that being said, like don't don't spoof those numbers. You don't need to. You should you should you should just say it as it is. It, you, this is exactly how many customers. I'm proud of each and every single one of those customers, because it, it gives people an idea of okay, are, are you are you are you what I'm looking for? Uh, and also, don't don't make up brands and put fake brands on there too. You might think that's really impressive, but a lot of people don't, and they're like, oh great. Uh, I, I'm looking for maybe some of my maybe maybe something a little bit uh, more niched on what I on what I do, but yeah, don't 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 put random companies brands on there for social proof. That's that's a no no. Any any guys been on a site where you're like, there's no way that's that's your client. There's there's no way. I'm I'm seeing a I'm seeing the entire room nod here. Yeah, right. It's ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. Um, and if you do get your uh, customers on there, be sure to ask them nicely, right? Make sure you have their permission. They, they, they actually aren't, they could, they could, if, if they find themselves on there and they're like, Hey, I didn't, I didn't have your permission. You could, you can lose a lot of trust and lose a lot of rapport. They might cancel. They might do worse, you know, especially if they're a trademarked company. Yeah. Could, could get a lot worse. And I don't want to get into that worse, but yeah, it gets worse. <clears throat> All right. How are we doing? Everyone on, everyone, anybody fall asleep back there? It's okay if you did. I don't judge you. It's late in the day. You know, these are long days here. Thank goodness they had popcorn earlier. I was, I was getting hungry. Oh, all right. I'm not going to get into the BBB just because I'm not going to get into the BBB, but I'm going to give credit to where credit is due. It's a very, very big uh, belief of mine. Um, 
there are people, small businesses out there that will actually fake BBB credentials, even though most of the time they will sell it to you for $500 a year. It, they, they, do, they, do, they do have a purpose though. And uh, I will say with much provoking, the local Dallas BBB here suspended the BBB accreditation for fake reviews for a company called Omniki Realty with a little bit of prompting from, uh, I'm not gonna say who, but someone who specializes in fake reviews. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. But uh, yeah, that, that's a big deal. They even put out a press release about it saying that, look, uh, this company provided details about fake reviews. So the Dallas BBB is revoking your accreditation because of your fake reviews. It's a kind of a big deal, right? Now you're dealing with a PR nightmare because nine or 10 other places took that press release, syndicated it on their site. And now you have 10 links that rank for your keyword that are like, you got, you got removed from the BBB. Why? What happened? Right? Now they get, now, now people who are doing due diligence are going to run into that. So anyways, uh, but outside of the, Credit where credits do stuff. This is another example of certificates, right? Or, or uh, awards that that people are spoofing, right? So, don't spoof awards. Go out there and earn them. And if you're not going to earn them, make up your own and have fun with it, right? Maybe you're the best uh, best at something. It's okay to make up make up new awards. All right, just don't steal, you know, the property of of like the BBB. All right. I want to talk about the best place to display social proof. Where should you do it? Well, I think it's everywhere. And I, I challenge any one of you guys to disagree here. Only, only not not because I'm trying to say I'm smarter than you. I'm really not. I'm like the mouse that turned that milk into butter and climbed his way up. I promise you. I promise you. But uh, what I'm trying to get at is that I, I truly believe that at every stage of the customer journey, there is a small place for social proof, and some brands are doing it extremely well. Uh, some brands are not doing so good at it. Uh, but let's talk about the homepage, right? On the homepage, a lot of the times you'll see that, you know, seen on publication, maybe right at the bottom of the fold. You guys see a lot of that. Um, sometimes it'll even include like a, a testimonial or a video in the upper right hand corner uh, or like, you know, if you, if you like the first part of the website split, a lot of the times that first one will be a, a video testimonial. Um, but you'll see a lot of those things. You'll see the number of customers, the types of customers and all, all those things on the homepage. So homepage is kind of a no brainer. Now I want to get into specific types of um, social proof that you can kind of get creative with. Uh, there's a company out there uh, called GatherUp. They, I think, were the, one of the first to utilize this. But in online reviews, uh, you can segment them and filter them, right? So if you have location pages, let's say you're a brand and you've got 42 locations, and all each of those 42 locations has backslash Milwaukee, backslash Minnesota, backslash Tampa. Have you ever seen those links at the bottom where they have all the locations? Well, those location pages can show location specific reviews. It's very specific to that location, making sure that those locations have have it. Or or maybe you offer a product or a service. Maybe we're talking about smoothies here, right? Uh, and each smoothie has its own page. Well, you can display the reviews specific to that smoothie or the keyword or a specific thing about that product. That's a great, great way to add some social proof to a to a specific service or product page is by using those reviews that are specifically for that product versus a general review, right? Which maybe isn't context, like in context, isn't as relevant. Um, uh, <laughs> I like blog side panels. I always think that that's a great place to kind of sneak in a little bit of extra advertising, right? Maybe about a product or a service and you can, you can offer a, a testimonial about your brand or product in there. I think it's always, it's a great segue into getting people to convert on your blogs. Um, yeah. All right. How are you guys? How are we doing? We're doing all right. I'm checking in on you, making sure nobody's drowning out there. Of course. And, no, no, please, please. What channel do you find the best 
I'll, I'll Google my business. You can't like you can res respond directly to their review. Yeah. Um, you can send an email to like your email like segment. Let's say it's like, hey, we'll send out ask for review back. But in your experience, not how do you eliminate a bad review? How do you what channel do you find next to get your reviews? Text. Text. SMS. Text. SMS. Yeah. And yeah. they're not spammy like it's actually. Yeah, especially if you provided a good product or experience. I mean, you know, it's it it starts. You want five star reviews? You got to start with providing a five star product or service and a five star experience. Like, you know, people pay money for a product or or service. They expect it, and they expect you to do a good job. Why should I take my time to write about a product that I paid for? I that that's my hard earned cash I gave you. I expect that. You want me to go out of my way to spend a few minutes to write about it? I, that's not not something I need to do. So if you want reviews, you got to go out of your way to deliver an experience that maybe they weren't expecting. Maybe you did something a little extra for them because now they're doing a little something extra for you. I'm not saying go and incentivize them with gift cards, but if you offer a product or a service, you know, with online products, you guys have probably heard of the unboxing experience. Go out of your way to do something amazing in that unboxing experience, right? If you're providing a product, do do something a little extra. Clean up the house a little better. Uh, you know, give the dog a haircut. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, do just do something that they weren't expected that wasn't part of the original deal that they signed for. And you'll find that those number of reviews you earn skyrocket. Uh, also, yeah, SMS. If you want to automate some stuff and get in, get get into your CRM, I from from be, from research and being involved in online reputation for about eight years, I've I've seen that SMS works best. Yeah, yeah. All right, a little plug from my friend Aaron Wykey. Started a company called Leadferno. Uh, it's cool, but outside of that, I just want to show you how they use social proof. Uh, in their product. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but like right here, there, there are, nah, it's really blurry, isn't it? But I'll tell you, right here it says the number of stars and the number of reviews. And they add that as a way to enhance uh, conversion. They're like, oh yes, I want to talk with a company that has a 4.8 star rating, that has 72 reviews, right? Because before it was just a, a, chat, bu a, ch a chat button. Yeah, chat with us but they added social proof to that chat button because it converts more clients. Um, yeah, they saw a big, they saw uh, the before and afters before they added this, this social proof was, was huge, especially for smaller companies. That's what he told us. He said, uh, Curtis, you know, any business who was doing like 10, 15 leads a month that added this feature saw a huge difference versus brands that were seeing like 200 leads a month. It was only a, Small, a, a smaller boost, but but for the little companies that added a little bit more social proof, they saw a big, big difference. Um, yeah, let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna talk about me just for a little bit. I am a sponsor. I only I paid a little bit of money to talk to you guys. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try and make this non salesy as possible. I created a pretty cool product that can predict if you earned your reviews online or if you paid for them. And the way we uh, try and tell you what the data says is in a report called a transparency report. If you pass, you get a nice blue verified badge. If you fail, you get a really ugly failed badge. You can scan yourself. You can scan your competitors. You can scan the doctor you're about to use. Uh, and if you're one of our six attorney general clients, you can scan every business in the city and sue them. It's pretty cool, <laughs> right? So anyway, that, that's, uh, that's essentially how we, how we make money. We sell our data to people who are thinking about working with a business. We sell it to businesses who want competitor analysis, like you know, they want to understand their competition. Uh, and they, uh, for really large brands, they want to know like, which of our 18,000 franchises uh, are cheating because they're semi-autonomous and they can do a little bit of their own marketing using agencies and maybe there's a bad agency out there purchasing fake reviews and hurting the entire brand, not just that one part smaller brand. So anyway, that's how, that's how we're used. Uh, we also do a little bit of LSA tracking and some other fun things out there. Um, yeah, <laughs> here's some like social proof, you know, in our early, early days, you know, we have these GMB certificates we put out, we have our little, uh, 
badge that people put on their websites. People even put us uh, our badge in their Google My Business page and their listings. Um, I think on average, we've been up to 20 new businesses a week are adding our badge. So although we're 13 months old, we're, we're, we're strumming along here and trying to, trying to pave the way for a place where people can take reviews at face value, you know, where you can go online and really feel comfortable moving forward with them because those experiences were earned by, you know, from a real person and not just spoofed by some freelancer over in India or Pakistan or Bangladesh. That's where they mostly come from. Uh, let's see here. I think, all right, it looks like that's about it. I know we're really early. I think we've got, like, what, 15 more minutes? Yes, yeah, so we had some questions. So, uh, you have some power. If you've done any business with these extortionists at consumeraffairs.com, uh, tell me uh, what you think about it. Consumeraffairs.com? Wow. Gotcha. Gotcha. Not, not anything like that. Um, so I I'd like to understand how they're extorting you because we take, we, we also allow users to share video feedback and consumer affairs from what I understand is a pretty upstanding, legitimate website that reviews businesses. I mean, I, I look, yeah, with the star, we can go on their site right now if you'd like. Did I have an embarrassing website pull up? Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Woo! I'm just kidding. Up. Yeah. Is this it? Is this the one? Is this the one? Consumer Affairs? So whether it's true or not, huh? whether it's true or not, yeah. what? you got to pay play. So they encourage people to go on there and, and say whatever they want, but you can't respond unless you pay them per location a quite exorbitant fee. I see. I see. Yeah, you get one. I'm just curious. All right. I've got like four emails right now. They come to that. All right, all right. So I do have one contact. His name's Daniel Brower, and I will I will reach out to him. I will reach out to him for you. Yeah. 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 Just I. I can also send you a snippet for the from the FTC review moderation guidelines that show that where where users should be allowed to respond uh, and even flag illegitimate online reviews, and that was just pushed out two months ago. So I can give you that URL as well, where you can show them if they're not in compliance with the FTC's new review moderation guidelines. I wouldn't like threaten to sue them, but I, I would certainly certainly show them that the, their policies may be. Uh, outside of compliance with the FTC's new uh, uh, review moderation guidelines. Um, yeah, but uh, happy to chat with you afterwards and see if I can reach out to someone over there. Any uh, any other questions? Yeah. So, and they're all five stars, you know, the average for a that alone is probably suspicious. I don't know. That's really high for home services. But if I were if I were to use your service, what would that look like? Like what are the steps? Like you guys Well, while you guys are here, yeah. I have a booth in the back. It's uh with a bunch of uh, embarrassing banners. Just come by my table and tell me the name of the business you want to search and I'll do it on the spot with you. It takes 90 seconds for me to audit a business with our technology. Um so for free. Um our prices are really varied based on your intent. Uh, but um, for the most part, you can get a free report for any business uh, using our Chrome extension. We have a free Chrome extension for, for available for consumers. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Oh, sure, sure. Um, yeah, so for major brands, they're PDF reports. 
PDF reports are anywhere from four to, I've seen them 200 pages long, that provide evidence as to why each specific review is real or fake. For larger organizations, we have a, a JSON output that they can integrate into their existing custom dashboards so they can line up the review and then provide the transparency score, which is the legitimacy of that review inside of their own you know, dashboards if they have their own dashboard for these reviews. Um, but most, for the most part, it's reports. And then we have multi-location reports. we will have like a table of contents and it, you know, it'll, it'll show you like which locations passed, which locations failed. If you manage like a, a large brand with lots of locations, you can say, hey, this, you know, our, our Dallas, probably not Dallas, Dallas is pretty on the up and up, right? But maybe those people in Austin have fake reviews. Those Austin people have fake reviews. And, and then you on the table of contents, you click on it and then it goes into the evidence of why those reviews are fake. And hopefully an easy and under, understandable way. Um, we have like a community, subdomain community.askfortransparency.com. It's free, provide training on all of this and show you, you know, how to use our, our tech. But uh, yeah, sure. Any other questions? Yeah, I have one. So you mentioned uh, Austin versus Dallas versus Houston, whatever. No, is there a part of the country that is clean or is there a part of the country that's dirty? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, please don't have anything embarrassing. Please don't have anything embarrassing. Okay, we're good, right? I typed in M, nothing. Whew. So uh, this is a, a study that... Uh, we did studying, can you guys see it? Four million reviews. Um, it was in collaboration with a company called Uberall. They wrote us a big check to analyze all these reviews. Thank goodness. Uh, and um, uh, on page 16 of this report, it goes into detail about some of these figures. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Nope, 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 nope. Can you guys see that? Yeah? Probably not surprising to some of you. Right? So uh, yeah, review fraud is pretty rampant. In 2021, Google alone removed 95 million fake reviews. That's 280,000 fake reviews a day. The average fake review that's resold in the US is about 50 and overseas it's about five. It's estimated to be over a $50 billion industry that most people would just kind of be like, oh yeah, I know there's fake reviews. But is it a 50, it's a $50 billion industry on just Google. Now, Amazon removed 200 million fake reviews last year. That's almost 600,000 fake reviews a day. Yeah. Yeah. So fake reviews is a very, very major issue uh, in today's society. It's still, for the most part, underreported, under, under talked about. And really, there's not a lot of solutions in place. Yeah. Google, Yelp, Trustpilot, TripAdvisor, the, uh, for the most part. Um, we also will do Facebook for research. N no, no, we just do, we, sp we stick, because our NLP, it's, uh, it's specific to local businesses, not e-commerce. Um, you'll find e-commerce reviews to be much shorter uh, and, and describing other types of things about a product, whereas we're, we're talking about uh, stuff that describe an experience about a service. So services, yeah, our NLP, our NLP is geared towards services. It's no problem. You type in the name of, of a business on our site, it'll pull all, like Kayak, you know, it'll pull all the reviews all, all into one and then you can get a report and then it'll pull in the reviews from each site automatically for you. We, we took the liberty of kind of mapping that all together. Yep. Yep. All right. One more question. Who has a question? Uh, you guys are good. Thank you very much for not falling asleep and attending. I appreciate it. And again, feel free to come by my booth, scan any business you want. Thank you, sir. Very good. That was good. Now, I